Have you ever brought home a coral only to find something living inside it? Maybe you bought a colony online and it came with an Acropora crab living amongst its branches. Well, it turns out that there's a whole group of understudied cryptic creatures that spend their entire lives either in live coral like that or maybe in the coral rubble on coral reefs. Hi guys and girls, I'm Reef Man, and this week we'll be talking about a paper titled the length weight relationships to quantify biomass for modal coral reef cryptofauna. The lead author is Dr. Kennedy Wolf, and it was published in the December issue of Coral Reefs, the journal for the International Coral Reef Society. There is a link down below in the description, as always. You can check it out if you want more detail. And by the way, if you like videos like this, think about joining the International Coral Reef Society. This is their journal. It's not very expensive. Memberships are about maybe $100 or so a year. And they're actually a lot cheaper in a lot of cases, like if you're a student or, um, well, a bunch of cases, check out their website. It's linked down below. And as a member, of course, you do get their journal, you get their online magazine, and there's a bunch of other just neat sort of perks along with it. So it's really cool for people like you who are interested in coral science. Okay, so that title, what is a length-weight relationship? Why should we care? Well, to answer that, we need to take a step back. Ecology, that's the study of the relationships between organisms. Ecology is based on knowing how many of a given animal live in an area. Now, that might be really easy to figure out if you're studying herds of elephants, and it's also pretty easy for fish. You can take a video and then just count each fish present in the video. But it's not so easy for cryptic animals like worms, snails, or crabs that live their entire life hidden amongst the colonies of coral. In fact, lots of animals live within the branches of coral in the wild. This paper looked at 42 groups of modal cryptofauna. That just means little animals that are hard to find and they move around. Uh, and they're all found inside Acropora, Pasilopora, or in the dead coral or coral rubble on the reefs near Palau, Western Micronesia. The team collected colonies of coral and also trays of rubble, and they took them all back to their lab closely inspected them, got what they could see, and then rinsed out the rest of the cryptofauna that was present. They identified everything that they could, and then they returned it all back to the ocean at the original collection site. You might actually have some of these creatures in your tank yourself. Most of us have bristle worms. They're a common polychaete worm found in the coral rubble in the study. In a previous tank, I actually had Acropora cat crabs. They came in colonies of Acropora that I bought from the diver's den at Live Aquarium, and they just came for free because they go unnoticed in the hobby, just like in the wild. If you do want Acropora crabs specifically, Live Aquaria does sell them. They're about $40 a piece. And Acropora crabs are generally pretty good for your coral. They help keep algae and things like that from collecting within the branches, which is only going to benefit the coral's health. So other than the Trapezidae Acropora crabs, there were a whole bunch of bristle worms that they found, many, many different types of snails, a family of mussels and a family of bivalves. Those are, uh, you know, shelled animals like, like you might know. Uh, they found five families of crabs and two families of starfish in the live Acropora or the Pasilopora or in the dead coral that they screened in the study. The authors do provide an interesting chart here of the animals that were found and where they were found for at least some of the families. In fact, the families in this chart are the ones where the habitat type actually made a significant difference. So you can just assume that the rest were basically evenly found in all four locations that they studied. And by the way, the chart that you're looking at, LA, the first column is live Acropora, LP is live Pasilopora, DC is dead coral, and RU is coral rubble. Now you can see that Trapezidae, the Acropora and Pasilopora crabs, are basically only found in live coral. There are also some bivalves found primarily in live coral. The, um, mostly the family Limidae, and those you might know as file shells, and the flame scallop that some of you might even have in your tank is in that family. I thought it was interesting that those would be found in live coral. Once you know how many animals are present, for ecology you also want to study their biomass. It's a standard measure of productivity of an ecosystem, but you can't directly measure these tiny critters without destroying the coral reefs to get to them and then hurting the animals to measure them. And this is the first study that produced the length weight relationship for those animals. Using the data that's in this paper, future studies are going to be able to do their work without impacting reefs around the world. Now, traditionally, to calculate biomass, 
you would just go and sacrifice individuals of the species until you had a sufficient number to establish an average. Obviously, that's destructive. And so these length-weight relationships are becoming more and more common in science, particularly in fishes, where it is hard to weigh them, and now in coral reef cryptofauna, where everything is hard. It's relatively easy to just get the length of a fish or a worm or something like that from a photo or video of the animal. And then using that, using the length weight relationship formula that's given in this paper, you can get the expected average weight of that animal. Multiply that out by how many individuals you think might be in your area of the reef that you're studying, and you can have a reasonably accurate value for the biomass of acropora crabs or whatever creature you're studying using the formulas. If you're interested in a way to figure out about how much one of your fish weighs, you can find this information online in FishBase for many of the fish that we keep in our tanks. You can use the formula weight equals A times the length to the power of B, and you can plug in the values from FishBase, and you can see that for an Achilles tang, A is going to be 0.02344, and B is going to be 2.96. So we plug all that in, do a bit of math, and if my tang is about 16 centimeters long, then it weighs about 86 grams on average. That could be really useful information. A lot of medication needs to know the weight of the animal being dosed. And so if I ever needed to figure out a dosage, I could use that to figure it out. By measuring biomass, cryptic invertebrates far outweigh the fish that live on coral reefs. Cryptofauna in general includes all the tiny fish, the blennies and gobies, which I was talking about in a previous video. Those tiny fish actually form the base of the ecosystem that is a coral reef. And there's a link above if you want to find more about that. The paper publishes a huge wealth of information on these cryptic animals, including both the overall lengths and weights and means of all those things, and all of the specimens studied, as well as the actual length-weight relationship and the equation for each of them. Note, some of the equations are not as simple as what we just used for my Achilles tang. They kind of massaged them to best fit the data so that it'd be more accurate. Now, I thought this was really interesting that there are many times more cryptic creatures that lived in coral rubble than in the living coral. You think live coral is going to be full of stuff, right? But it turns out that our acropora crabs are somewhat special in that regard. So while there are less creatures living amongst the branches of live coral, those creatures actually do way more on average than those found in rubble or dead coral, which is also an interesting bit. There's also a neat little wrinkle in the data. The trapezidae crabs, the acropora crabs, these crabs are pretty much only found in live coral, except when one has a territorial dispute and that causes another crab to leave the colony. Those crabs, the crabs that have to leave the colony, it stands to reason a larger crab is going to win the territorial disputes, are usually found in the coral rubble, not in the coral colonies, and those ones are much smaller than the ones that are found in live coral. Another interesting point was that the turbinidae snails, the turbine snails, which many of you might have in your tank, were very commonly found in live Postulophora coral. Now, I don't think of turbine snails as living in coral, but it seems like at least some species do. So that might explain why sometimes I find those snails on my coral, although I don't have Postulophora in my tank. I've always wondered how the heck they get there, uh, because you just find a snail in a colony one day. I hope you found the video interesting. Subscribe if you want to see more like it, and have a fantastic day. Be kind to each other, stay safe, and I will see you next time. Bye!